Hello, everyone, and welcome to the triumphant, <laughs> not at all botch return of my live drawing session. And it's fantastic to have you all here. I will formally introduce myself as the scribbling chimp. And I will attempt to start doing these again on a ongoing basis. But it's great to have you all here. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to draw. There's going to be some drawing involved. Um, we're all going to have some fun. Some great stuff. Um, so I shall begin. And I shall take you back to 2019. Now, 2019 saw a um, staggering event in television in a planet that was splintered apart. There was one show that united us, taught us to love again, and brought some enthusiasm and some optimism back in our lives. And that show... <laughs> And that show was, of course, Game of Thrones. More specifically, Game of Thrones Series 8. Series 8 of Game of Thrones. A series so polarising, my camera doesn't even want to focus. I'm sure I've made that joke before. Yes. Yes, everyone. This is a Game of Thrones drawing session. Now, I'm just going to say at this point, okay, I'm just going to add that for anybody watching this live or anybody watching this not live, for that matter, um, if you don't watch Game of Thrones, if you don't like Game of Thrones, if you don't even know what Game of Thrones is, it's fine, it's okay. You are equally as welcome as the people who do understand what Game of Thrones is. In fact, it could be argued that you are at an advantage having never seen Game of Thrones for reasons that I will go into as I am talking. And I will begin. Wow, this really wants to not focus today. So, now, what I'm going to do in this session, I am going to draw a pivotal moment from the eighth series of Game of Thrones. Yeah. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to show you what's on the screen. I'm not going to show you what picture I'm putting up. And as I'm drawing it, okay, it's a bit of a mystery round. As I'm drawing it, you guys have to try and figure out which pivotal scene from Game of Thrones series 8 I will be drawing so I have now got the image up on the screen I'm not going to show it to you but I'm going to draw it okay all right and that's my timer so you guys can be rest assured that I do not waffle on past my um, due course okay so here we go and I'm going to draw. Okay, the things I want you to affiliate with this drawing, the things I want you to um, try and think when I'm doing this drawing, to try and work out what I'm doing, is I want you to think about terror. I want you to think about darkness. And I want you to think about a acidic burning sensation in your stomach. So whether you despised Series 8 of Game of Thrones, whether you liked Series 8 of Game of Thrones, or whether you've never even watched or cared for Game of Thrones, you are all winners. And the reason why you are all winners is because you are all currently surviving the perpetuating fart party that is 2020. So give yourselves a big pat on the back. Let's all, let's all come together in one space and talk about Series 8 of Game of Thrones, free of judgment. And what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to draw some sinister, sinister looking eyes. Some really, really terrifying eyes. I mean, everyone who's kind of watched Game of Thrones knows about the terror and the, um, the unfolding despair that many, um, many of the characters. Um, you're allowed to comment if this focus thing is, uh, is, uh, is annoying you because heavens above. It's irritating me. Um, there you go. Now that's um, now that paints a pretty scary image. Now this is kind of what you um, what you guys are in for today. So let me take you back to um, twenty nineteen. 
Okay, this is a little story from 2019. And in uh, 2019, the uh, series creators of Game of Thrones, David Benioff, D.B. Weiss, they were at the cinema and they were watching Avengers Endgame. Uh, three hours into Avengers Endgame, the trumpets of Henry James kick in at the end. Yeah. It's been a long time. Do, 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 do. You know that tune. Um, Steve Rogers kisses Peggy Carter. And the credits roll. And they're on their phones. They're right at the premiere. They're right at the start of the film. They're on their phones and they are looking at all the comments of how well Avengers Endgame is doing. And they are thinking to themselves how good a year that they're going to have. And they both turn to each other and they both look and they go, yeah, 2019, it's going to be the year for us. It's going to be good. And then Series 8 began and unfolded on TV. Wow. Any idea what I'm drawing yet? Terror. Terror beyond your wildest imaginings. And a burning sensation in your stomach. That's what I want you to think about here. Any guesses? Um, so for all the people that don't care for Game of Thrones, thank you for your perseverance. Thank you for still being here. How is everyone doing, by the way? How is everyone? Yeah. Um, so yesterday I drew some sauce. Drew a jar of, jar of sauce. So it's 2019, episode three of series eight of Game of Thrones. It was called The Long Night. And The Long Night portrayed an epic battle in the um, fortified remains of Winterfell. Who remembers that, eh? Fortified remains of Winterfell. Um, they led the Dothraki into the front charge. And Sajora, the ever loyal and lovable character, Sajora, was um, leading the charge with them. And um, it was all going well. The trumpets were roaring. Everyone was yelling triumphant. But then the Dothraki, they crashed into this into this mass of um, into this mass of creatures. All the um, all the lights went out, and all the people kind of on the back lines were um, standing there, all terrified and unsure. And then Sajora, who um, managed to capture the um, art of being in slow motion, um, rode past. And he looked at, I think it was Jamie Lannister. He looked at, and then just shook his head in dismay. And then it all kicked off really suddenly because there was this huge charge of creatures all crashing towards the camera. And you guys might remember this as the Army of the Dead. It wasn't the Army of the Dead. It was an army of cranky millennials all on their mobile phones. And they were all shouted at once and they were all saying these different things. They were saying things like, ah, oh, it's too dark. I can't see anything. Ah, oh, why did Daenerys do that? Ah, uh, why did he get to be king? Ah, uh, the writing was terrible. Ah, uh, oh, I'm so upset. Ah, uh, don't don't put them anywhere near Star Wars. Ah, uh, and um, you know, all at once, all came crashing towards the camera, and um, the unsullied, the brave unsullied, they were stood there, and good old Grey Worm at the front, getting ready to um, receive this onslaught. Um, they all got their shields together and their spears ready and they all chanted as bravely as they could. They all did the unified military chant of, don't worry, it's just a TV show. But it was too late and the uh, army of cranky millennials overran them, smashed through their ranks, and heads rolled. Um, you know, there was, um, there was blood, and blow, blood, and blood and bones flying everywhere. And um, it was a big me mess. And the camp was overrun in minutes. And uh, it was um, it was a it was a terrible mess. You know the, uh, the the generals at the back, the millennial generals. 
Um, they, 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 they wanted an entire rewrite. You know, and they were fronted by the Night King. Who eventually found his way to that little tree place. Where um, Bran Stark was waiting. And they stared at each other for a bit. And uh, Maisie Williams came and saved the day. Now most people remember Maisie Williams as Arya Stark. But she didn't play Arya Stark. She played the part of 2020, the year 2020. Diving in from behind with a dagger. Boom. Right through the Game of Thrones offense. And it evaporated. Now you might be wondering to yourself, why Game of Thrones, Ash? Why, why, why Game of Thrones? What, what, what's Game of Thrones got to do with anything? It's 2020. Nobody cares anymore. You haven't even done this in a timely manner because the one year anniversary, that was back in May. So what, what's the deal, Ash? What's going on here? And, uh, well, I know that, but clearly there's, um, there's bad blood here. There's unfinished business. Are you feeling the terror? Of that drawing yet. There's unfinished business. Bad blood. Ooh. Um, you know, and I can play um, devil's advocate for the um, people that didn't care much for Game of Thrones Series 8. I mean, I quite liked it. You know, I'm one of those um, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull idiots, you know. I'm one of those um, Game of Thrones Series 8 um, Matrix Revolutions idiots. But I can play Devil's Advocate for the other side because they had a point. I mean, I hardly think that, um, you know, back in um, back in the early years, back in the early years of Game of Thrones, people were wondering to themselves, thinking towards the end, um, thinking to themselves, oh, I wonder... Um, I wonder what I wonder how this is going to end. I hope um I hope it involves a bunch of um a bunch of low light, you know. Um I I'd, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather not see what's happening. Um I'd rather it be a little bit a little bit a little bit too dark to actually make anything else. And Daenerys, Daenerys, I'd love to I'd love to see a growing range of facial expressions. I'd love to see her in faces that you've never seen her pull before and I would love to um, I'd love to see a blade of grass sticking out of some snow I'd love to see that I'd love to see an incestuous swordsman having a fist fight with a sort of pirate rock star Um, so I can play devil's advocate for all those people. Um, just doing a doing a bit of a trim there. Getting the hand a little bit of shading on the hand. Um, I'm trying to um, I'm trying to reveal key points of detail at certain at certain intervals to keep you guys mystified yeah just think uh, just think pure terror I'm a I'm a millennial too so I'm not um, I'm not being prejudiced I mean boomers hated it as well apparently But I think given the whole longevity of Game of Thrones and I think kind of, you know, where it came from and where it started and everything, I think we should um, we should give a shout out to some of the more obscure characters from the earlier years. <laughs> some of the more obscure characters, um, such as, um, well, such as Ed Sheeran. He was in it, wasn't he? Ed Sheeran and Richard E. Grant. Do you remember that time Richard E. Grant was in it? And um, he played the part of um, part of an actor in a in a in a theatre thing, um, which I think definitely went off piste from the source material. 
at that point. And, uh, of course, my favourite Game of Thrones character, the character that um, surpassed the importance of every other character in the entire show, and that character was the mighty Shagger Son of Dolph. Who doesn't love Shagger Son of Dolph? From the first series, yeah, of his tribes. Yeah, that guy. Uh, backbone of the series. I think that guy should have got a spin-off. But, um, you know, it never happened, but he deserved it. Good old, good old Shagger, son of Dolph there. Um, so, yeah, I think, um, I think people might be starting to get what pivotal scene that we're talking about here. What, um, what pivotal moment I am attempting to captivate in this scene. Um, just do a bit of, do a bit of shade. Now I'm going to leave the face till last. Um, but I think some of you, some of you might have already cracked it. Do a little, do a little moustache, yeah. Crazy times, <laughs> crazy days. You know what's disappointing? It's when you do a drawing and it actually turns out, well, pretty decent. But that's, <laughs> that's surely purely a matter of opinion, don't you think? Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I think you guessed it now. I think you know where this is going. Okay, 15 minutes, we're at the halfway point. That's good, that's good. I mean, I can um, officially reveal what this drawing was all along. The terrifying moment was, of course, the pre-battle meal orchestrated by Sir Davos there. And the burning feeling that you get in your stomach is from eating one of his delicious soups. Which he kindly brewed for everyone. Look at it there. Look at it there. Do you know what? I'm just going to add some steam. Wisping from the top. A kind of vapour. Because he cooked all his soup fresh. Kept it hot. So Davos the Onion Knight, can you believe someone asked him what flavour his soup was? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Game of Thrones Series 8, guys, in a nutshell. Now look, I understand, okay? I get it. I understand. All right, this is not the closure you wanted, okay? Some of you might have quite liked it, but for the better part, most of you were thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly disappointed in the ending to Game of Thrones Series 8. Okay, um, now my primary mission, I mean, this was just kind of, this was a little bit on the side. If you like, my primary mission in this was to... Here you go again, focus. Was to bring a sense of closure bring a sense of closure to the um to, to the whole um story of game of thrones um which obviously the public felt that they never received that they felt like they never had so i'm going to do that for you here okay now i've talked about something on these live shows before and that thing is of course my um emergency boxes my emergency kits you know, um, when my wife is um, working the um, stay-at-home job and looking after the kids and preparing all the meals and the breakfasts um, and generally doing all the kind of work that goes into sort of running a house and a family um, and just keeping everything afloat and addressing problems as and when they arrive. I'll be up in the attic doing drawings. Okay, and that's why we make a good team, because she doesn't have to worry about that. I, I, I take care of that. 
you know so that's kind of that's kind of out of her hands and that's why I make a good team so this is a closure that you guys wanted but you never had okay just gonna reach up here this is the closure you guys wanted but you never had this is a problem this here who sits on the Iron Throne now most people did not take kindly to um, to how this went down. I mean, there you go. There's a, there's a free-eyed raven there. Um, please note that I made a complete donkey's blanket over the positioning of the sword. So when I put these faces down, um, you have to kind of imagine that they're sort of leaning with their chin um, over, over the sword like that. And uh, yeah, that's just something that um, that's something that we're gonna have to um, gonna have to get through. So this is this is what this is one of my many thousands of repair kits that I keep out of the house. This is my emergency Game of Thrones alternative ending kit. Okay, the emergency Game of Thrones alternative ending kit was something that I devised when I was watching series eight of Game of Thrones, and I was concerned that it might not end in the way that people would like it to end. Okay, so I started um, coming up with all these multiverse um, what-ifs, um, all these alternate versions, all these rewrites of what could have happened instead. So, I'm just going just gonna to open this box. This box just, um, there you go, see all the stuff inside. I'm going to tipple that out there. Okay, the classic person sitting on the Iron Throne picture. You don't need to have watched Game of Thrones to know what this image is. And it was classically, especially in the genesis of the start of the show back, it was particularly occupied by uh, Ned Stark. So Mr. Sean Bean playing Ned Stark, yeah. And that's what it looked like at the start. But it was a very different story at the end. And at the end... The eventual person on the throne was this young chap here, Ned Stark's son, Mr. Bran Stark. Uh, they made another throne, by the way. They just built it exactly like the one that the flipping dragon melted. Um, so that explains that. Uh, Bran Stark, that's the ending we got. Okay, that's how it ended, basically, in essence. Okay, so if you think of, um, if you're looking at this picture, you're thinking Game of Thrones ending. Okay. Um... It wasn't the ending people hoped for. People were actually hoping for a um, heroic taking of the throne by Mr. Jon Snow. And that's what people wanted it to look like. That's how, that's the ending people wanted. Jon Snow sitting on the throne there. But of course he didn't he didn't want that. He was like, No, no, I don't want that. So so that Never happened. I mean, some people were kind of concerned that the person on the throne wouldn't actually change and it would remain in the hands of Cersei Lannister. That's what we had going into Series 8, Cersei Lannister. And many were concerned that's how it would end. But it didn't. And this is when it could have got really wrong. This is when it could have got really wrong. This is, um, this is what could have happened if Daenerys... Targaryen. Well, this is in fact what did happen for a bit. I mean, this is a this is series eight Daenerys Targaryen. This is her heel turn. This is her uh, this is her sneer of discontent. I mean, wow. I mean, boy, boy, was she cross. You know, um, the bells flying over with the dragon and all that. That was Daenerys there. Um, but it could have gone really wrong. It could have gone terribly, terribly, terribly wrong. We could have had. Could have had Sir Gregor Clegane taking the throne. That would have been a real mess. You know, that would have been a been a real, real shocking turn of events. Lots of people wanted to see Varys. Lots of people wanted to see Varys, which would have been nice. He'd have, he'd have made a good king, you know. The the eunuch. The eunuch, yeah. And this is uh here we go. This is what some people were rooting for um towards the start. Towards the start of series one and series two, people were rooting for um, Mr. Rob Stark to take the Iron Throne. So there you go. 
Mr. Rob Stark, no. No, that's just not appropriate. That's just in bad taste. What? What's wrong with you people? But let's let let's do a let's do a little shout out to all the uh to all the unsung all the unsung heroes that could have potentially had the Iron Throne. Mr. Ed Sheeran there. Mr. Ed Sheeran taking the throne. Imagine it. Could have been. Or Mr. Richard E. Grant. You remember Richard E. Grant in it? That would have been good. That would have been pretty special. But my personal favourite, above all else, I would love to have seen the throne been taken by Shagger, son of Dolph. And there he is. Look at him there. He'd have made a great king. Shagger, son of Dolph. Uniting all the tribes together. But this is how I'm going to end it. This is how I'm going to round round this video off nicely as I made a very um, I made a very interesting observation. Very interesting observation. If you uh, take Shagger, son of Dolph, pop a pair of glasses on him, and he turns into Mr. George R. R. Martin. The true hero, sitting on his throne there. Wow. So, Game of Thrones, everyone. Sorry about that. Sorry, sorry to dig that up from the past. Um, it was just kind of, you know, just a bit of an idea. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. And also, thank you so much for your requests. Um, I had a sudden flux of great requests for different drawings and I shall fulfill every single one of them. So, for everyone who tuned in, thank you very much. I hope you had a great day and I shall hopefully see you next time. Ta-ta.